Yo, it's Schwartz. Um, look, I'm calling about this Goose interview. It's a big interview for us. They're friends. You guys have history. It's amazing that, that Peter and Rick are giving us this time and, and, you know, that they trust you. It makes me nervous that uh, they're putting so much trust in you, but I'm happy they're doing it. That said, as we discussed, this is your reminder. Try to keep it in the lines. Take this one really seriously. It's just important um, that you tr tr maybe a little less dick jokes. Maybe maybe no cocaine references. Let's not ask them who they're fucking. Let's not ask them what drugs they do. Let's just talk about music and the future, and that's it. It's just that fucking simple. Please, no dick jokes. Know who you're fucking. Know what drugs are you doing. And you don't need to do drugs either, by the way, at the interview. Like, it's not funny. Like, oh, oh, by the way, hey, Rick, Peter, here's my tank. Uh, uh, or here's some, you want some mushrooms? No. Not everybody wants to do nitrous, and not everybody wants to do mushrooms. All right. Love you. Bye. Wow. And we're back. We're back. Another episode of the World Saving Hangover. Episode 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andy Frasco. How's your heads? How's your minds? Are you, um... Not doing podcasts from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. with your cousin about your great <laughs> aunt? Wow. These hangovers keep sneaking up on you, don't they? <laughs> There's just some way you could stop these hangovers. I know. I think I just have to stop partying. No. But I'm just like, I work so hard. I come back okay, to Denver. Okay, here we go. They took our germs. <laughs> come on. Stop acting like... <laughs> I gotta oh, play so organ dramatic. With, I gotta play a sold out one show in Peoria and then go home with my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Just admit you like to drink. It's fine. I love to drink. But yeah. Here's something I was thinking about with you what? and being hungover. You need to realize that waking up with eight hours of sleep and you didn't drink the night before is also a drug. Oh. Have you ever felt that like you get a little buzz, like that nap buzz, like the sleep, like you got you're fully rested, there's yeah. like a buzz to it. Oh. You should try that buzz once in a while. Okay. Just some advice. Not today, though. Not today. <laughs> Let's go. Not every day, like once a week. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, <laughs> I actually I brought my doctor into um, to the show this week. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Reichman? Dr. Reichman. Karina Reichman is opening the show. Karina, how are we doing today? Dude, never better. Never better. How you doing? You're a city <laughs> kid. How do you not party on Tuesdays and Wednesdays? You're yeah. from New York. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's not always easy, and sometimes sometimes I guess you do a little bit, but not <laughs> yeah, yeah. not often. You know, you just keep it chill. You just fucking try to just keep everything uh, as as dialed as possible, so that the craziness of your life can be as crazy as it is, and then you fucking figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. I got no good answers. Yeah. Doctor no Reichman, that was the prescription. <laughs> I wonder if, like, growing up there, though, like. You're more used to New York City, so you don't get like drawn in because you grew up around it and you like seen it your whole oh, life. Oh no, she was deep in the cut. She was doing fuck. She was playing bass at punk rock. That's what I'm saying. At 13. That's what I'm saying. So maybe like the luster is gone. You know, she's already done it, seen, been, done, been there, done that. You know. I mean, I've I'm You've from been there, LA. done that too, though. Actually, yeah, <laughs> I've been there, done that. Oh, he's been there, done that. All right, <laughs> Karina, how is yeah. your new life as a DJ? <laughs> oh, dude. Things have things have never been uh, more different than they are now. <laughs> things are different. Things have changed. I'm, uh, yeah, you know, the offers are pouring in. It's just, <laughs> you know, I gotta wear the pink Daisy Dukes, and then I'm rich. Dude. It's great. It's great. Great life for me. Yeah, <laughs> have you heard this story, Nick? Of what's going on with her life? Dude, this is the craziest story. I know you probably repeated this on many shows. I saw you on Ari oh. Figs. But tell our fan base what the fuck happened for a second, because I think this is the most fascinating thing ever. Karina, Absolutely. you're on. With great pleasure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me, for sure. And that's, uh, you know, kind of saying something. But I, I have a friend named Katie, who is the best. And Katie got, first of all, Katie is not a musician. Katie is not a DJ. But Katie got booked to DJ at Stagecoach, the big festival what? that takes place at Coachella. <laughs> yeah. Big slot. Diplo's so honky funny. tonk, fuck it, you yeah. know, before her was like, you know, Brandy Cyrus and the chain smokers, like a big thing, you know, <laughs> and her slot uh, conflicted with Post Malone's and Willie Nelson. It was like a thing, you know? And so she calls me a few weeks in advance of, uh, of, you know, stagecoach and was just like, Hey Karina, do you want to like tag team this DJ set with me? 
And so I was funny. like, yes, I do. And yeah, then I do. was the, the one, the one weekend I was free. In a yeah, really exactly. Long time. Like, so when are like, you ever okay. free, dude? You're fucking Never. working every day, dude. <laughs> Literally. So I was like, oh, my God, April 27th or whatever. Holy shit. It's my one weekend off of, uh, you know, the last four months. Great. Perfect. I'm in. So I say yes. We're good to go. Knowing that I'm signing up for something that I don't even know what it is exactly. Like, I know that we're going to be DJing country music that I don't even know. You know what I mean? But that's where Katie comes in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, operating the shit. I fly to L.A. We're deep in the BPMs, getting the set together, pulling it all together. And then midweek the internet just explodes because <laughs> everyone is speculating that DJ Backwoods Barbie, which is what Katie was billed as <laughs> slash me, oh, is my God. secret Beyonce set. Yes. <laughs> everyone for Beyonce. So we got TMZ, Forbes, Good Morning America, <laughs> Time Magazine, Billboard, like, the, like you know, not, not fucking Jam Bass and Relics, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No Real thing. Like, this is like... This shit is like actually really. She positive. graduated to the big leagues. Oh god! And I'm just like, oh no! It's every major n- news outlet in the world. Holy shit! And then like you know, Did Twitter, you- TikTok. People are doing this investigative journalism that is just shocking. They're just like, well, this is why I know it's Beyonce because if you go to the DJ Backwoods Barbie Instagram, she posted at. 11 a.m. The blah blah blah, which is obviously a reference to this, which is obviously a reference to that. Mm. Bada bing, Beyonce. This and is I'm why like, this shit. is why people believe in conspiracy theories. Hundred percent. It's like hundred percent. They're just overthinking. Oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> they're just overthinking like exact. Mo- like, did you guys make an Instagram for it? Yeah. So Katie had made one months ago, and, and there was again, no pictures like, of you. Is, like, there's no, they were all like AI pictures of like country Barbie, Dolly oh. Parton, cowboy hat, riding a horse. Like she had made all this crazy weird shit, which was awesome. Were you playing along? All, like, were you playing along I, with it? Like did th- this Instagram right. exist before? <laughs> like uh, that Instagram existed when she got, when she got the gig and so she got the gig. She funny. was, you know, she was friends with a lot of the people. And like, and by the way, she like knows that music really right. well. Yeah. But is she, like she's not a regular DJ or anything like that. And for the record, nor am I, you know what I mean? Like I'm when I get paid to DJ, it's because I'm me, not because I'm like, you know, Diplo, right? you know? Right. But anyway, I say yes, buy the ticket, take the ride. And then, you know, yeah, that Instagram was definitely created like when she got the gig, but then, you know, shit had hit the fan and we were freaking out. And she did post like on the DJ backwards Barbie story she wrote, you know, this ain't Texas, ain't oh no holding, and oh I am my not God. Beyonce. <laughs> Just freaking, everyone's fucking losing their goddamn mind. But, uh, it said, but the last one, the last, it said, I'm not Beyonce. You know, okay. it said, this ain't Texas, ain't no hold on, I'm not Beyonce. And then, but like, <laughs> I that didn't, fucked with them so the story, hard. The story was too big at that point, and nobody, like, it just, it, it wasn't. People weren't buying it. And so when we got there, it was the most terrifying shit. I like, we had tons of extra security, by the way. I was sure we were going to get beer thrown at us. Like, I was like, dude, this is fucked. Like, we're, this is insane. Of course, I'm crazy, right? So I knew we had to push the envelope and be the world's biggest trolls. And I was like, we have to walk out to single ladies because that's fucking hilarious. Uh, Like, this is why. Which is a bold call, bold call, but we did it, which is fucking crazy and dope. Okay, so. Tell me about this. You see, you, you're, back, you're, you're setting up the gear. You start seeing yeah. a funnel of people waiting for your set. <laughs> and sequin cowboy thousands, boots. And thousands. Thousands of people the tent waiting is full. for set. Thousand, like Diplo's Honky Tonk <laughs> tent is just complete. Like thousands and thousands of people are there full Ugh. expecting Beyonce. And it's literally your girl me and your girl Katie just playing, it. you know, pop country music. So, okay, lights go down. Beyonce hits. Dude. Were people going ape shit screaming? One of the craziest, like I've never, I've <laughs> never heard like a roar of a crowd like that. You know what I mean? Like when, because like, and there's Damn. a video of us. There's a video of us on the side uh, of the stage. Like I have the mic. We're ready to go. They hit play on single ladies. We walk out there, and there's even like you know, there's a million crowd videos that you know surface yeah, later. I people, that. oh my god, oh my god, ah, ah, like really like screaming. hyperventilating. You <laughs> yeah. know. And then it's just us, like these fucking, <laughs> you know, and we're in pink Daisy Dukes looking ridiculous. I like, we got cowboy hats, the whole thing. <laughs> I have like thigh high white leather boots Isn't on. That the like, best? she is, that is out of fucking control. And, uh, and you know what, guys? Like, 
I mean, I'm I'm sure people were like boo, but like we did, there was not an audible boo. Right. There was just like, obviously our set conflicted with Post Malone. If I had missed Post Malone to see our asses, <laughs> I would be so fucking upset about it. So a lot of people left. But then yeah, there's a enough. video of me. Uh, I came out front and danced for the last song to you know a remix of Man I Feel Like a Woman, obviously, and uh, <laughs> and that's the last tune. And you still see like there's you know there's a shit, shit ton of people. Of I saw fun music. I mean. No, they they yeah. they committed. I, I saw. Like, I gotta, of course, you're gonna lose like the people who are just there to see Beyonce. But course. that's fucking I, awesome. I gotta say though, you are the king, Tr- Karina. Let's fucking go. Dude. I gotta say though, getting the biggest crowd pop you've ever heard in your life, and it's not for you, is the most bass player thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> classic, classic, dude. I'm not mad, dude. I'm, I'm here for it. I thought it was the funniest shit. I was like, this is like one of those things that will. Never happen again. No. You know what I mean? Like, this is a moment. Like, even if Backwoods Barbie plays again, like, this is like, this was just a very specific, weird cultural hmm. phenomenon vortex that I found myself in. That I was like, wow. All right. Like, that is this fucking is amazing. Like, this is, you say it was really crazy. So, how many people are blowing you up on Instagram saying, all right, I remember you, re- you were like screenshotting the Are You Beyonce's? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, how many tons. people? Tons. How many people started Twitter, following like, you? Like, what was that whole thing like? Like, how many people started oh, following the page and shit? Uh, you know what? The I mean, the DJ Backwoods Barbie Instagram yeah. went from like eighty-seven followers to like forty-five hundred followers <laughs> overnight type vibe. So that's you know that was interesting for me personally. Not much happened because yeah, no one knew it was you. Well, then no, it was really, and I like outed myself after the fact. I right. like posted like y'all, but like that was really for my fans, not yeah. I'll say fans, you know right. what I mean? Not stagecoach people who were like, y'all, yeah, like, whatever. And there were there were a few people who were like, dude, it wasn't Beyonce, but it was sick. <laughs> dude, you, I was listening I was like, to it. Like, cool. I mean, you're yeah. a good DJ. I mean, you got you got the music in you, dude. Like, you know it's it. It's all good, Good baby. musicians are good cool. DJs, usually. And to be honest, for the record, I'd rather see you than fucking Post Malone, bud. Let's go. I don't know. I like Post Malone. <laughs> That's my fucking boy. I like boy. them both. That's my boy. I like them both equally. That makes one of us, but I like your style. I like that. I like What's Stagecoach like? Is it just like basic-ass shit, or is it cool? Dude, it's like, I mean, it's like Coachella, but with country artists. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's... Take that as you will. There's like <laughs> oh, I like thought outside. it was like I thought it was like a stage at Coachella. No, it's same venue. It's, it's different Coachella weekend. for country. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's the biggest Got country it. music festival in the country. It takes place in the Coachella grounds, and okay. it's it's the weekend after. So they basically you've had two weekends of Coachella, and then it's Stagecoach. Mm. And I mean, fuck. I mean, our little compound was pretty lit. Like there were you know the Chainsmokers, yeah. Randy Cyrus, Diplo. I mean, you're on a huge the, stage. Like, you know, I, I know you're Dipple. from LA, Andy, but like that sort of LA yeah. influence yeah. sort of like yeah, yeah, yeah. vibes, very distant from your girl's vibe. So I'm just I like, know. what? What is going on with I these know. people? <laughs> you're chilling, like <laughs> being weird. Like, what's going on with you're this? So but I was into it because it was so ridiculous to begin with, you know? Wow, what what a amazing like that you had the weekend off. I'm and this whole fucking thing happened. I'm going to start doing that with my shows to start making people think it's someone cool. Karina, I know totally. you got to get out of here, get practicing. Thank you so much for being major on the show. Scales. Work on those major scales. Work on that Barbie <laughs> set. <laughs> all of it. All of it. I'll be working for you guys. Absolutely. Uh, We're doing uh, it. We're yeah, I'm so, proper. yeah, go kill Saturday. You're going to kill it. Uh, Karina Reichman's got a new record. Go right. check it out. Um, yeah, thank you so much. It, I, before I we go to uh, the Goose interview, who's your second favorite? <laughs> that's jam that's band when you really know Goose? what people like. You want, yeah. their second favorite jam band really tells you what kind of music they like. Second favorite. I mean, you know, are we? Let's ignore the Grateful Dead. And yeah, 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 yeah. They don't count for a second. Yeah, you know, famous. let's let's call it let's call it somewhere between Widespread Panic and the Disco Biscuits. Ooh, How about that? Like, ooh, hot take. Different flavors. Ooh, dude, different flavors than I thought. Know? Yeah, a little, little trashier than I thought, Karina. I thought you got a little uh, more that, pretentious. That punk rock background. My answer isn't trashy, dude. What are you talking about? Um, freeze. <laughs> um, freeze. Are you kidding? No, I am no. kidding. Yes. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I think the Disco Biscuits are on fucking fire right They're now. the punk rock band of the jam band scene. Who? That's, what, that's what I would say. Disco, Disco Biscuits? Biscuits? Yeah. yeah, I think so too. That's like, a, we get along so well on that work. And I open a ton of their shows. God bless them. They took yeah. me to Iceland. I've opened for them many right, times, right. you know, the last year and a half and whatever. And they're just, they're, it's like, family to me but like i actively love the music for sure and it's right. like you know we joke i've been seeing this band over half my life and they're finally good you know <laughs> it's like they're they sound and uh i say that with love, They've God, that is, love. They've they should put that on their fucking like 
poster. <laughs> or like that should be a yeah. tagline for their tour. Well, like, you know, we I had, we had Barbara on the show. He's like, yeah, you know, it's crazy. He was like, basically, he was like, we're practicing we're now. Practicing now. <laughs> I'm like, like, you are 50, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, unbelievable. Dude, sometimes you got to turn 50 to want to practice yeah. with your band. Yeah. It's like, unbelievable. Yeah. No, it. they sound so good. They're yeah, the they best do. dudes. And man, I mean, shit, we opened for them like three nights in... I don't know what month that was, March, yeah. maybe. I don't know. It all blends together. But they, yeah, there was one show at the State Theater in, in Portland, Maine, where it was just like going off like Ibiza style. You know what I nice. mean? Like people just popped off. And I was in the crowd dancing like an asshole the whole fucking, like, but like really going for it, yeah. like really dancing. Their I was fans like, are this awesome. Is yeah. So fun. They're fun. I just had the They're best the funniest time. fan I was like, base. We're going. They are the funniest fan base. Yeah. They also talk the bit most shit. Yeah, but they I do like. it. But it's funny when they do it. It's not yeah. like vitriolic because they know deep down their band's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Throw down heat over here. Mickey! Throw down heat. Oh my god! I will, te- I will text that to Mark Brownstein I'll right text now. That to, yeah, I'll text fuck. that to Barber. He knows what. He knows what. They know what time you. it is. But they, they're you- they're so well humored. That's the thing. Exactly. That's why you can say things like that. You yeah. can say things like that, and you can say things like uh, you know I've been seeing this band over half my life, and they're finally good. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah, 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 yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Humphrey's like that too. Like, like I have two houses. I just love that we're close friends with the biscuits or Humphreys. the biscuits and and uh, Humphreys. Humphreys. You know, because they have a good sense of humor. Like, who you? you oh, we all talk shit with our friends. Like, yeah, Mo's great. got a great sense of humor too. For oh the record, yeah, Mal Schneer. Yeah, 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 yeah. can talk some shit. I just don't know them. Al well. Schneer yeah, yeah. can talk some shit. They're New York. They're very funny. Yeah, very funny. You I know? love it. Yeah. Uh, you know. This well, let's not let's let's end this conversation before yeah. um, Karina gets canceled by the Jam Bay community for uh, for what we have to say. <laughs> Getting canceled is good for your career these days. <laughs> yeah, this is all great. This no. is all great. Karina, uh, I love you, bud. Keep keep the keep doing the Lord's work. Uh, we're rooting for you here, over here, and um, hopefully we could play some shows together. I heard there might be talks Dude, of like maybe doing a tour together. Don't you have the same agent? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, we do. God bless and thank you, Andy. I'd love to do that, and yeah. I love you. Yeah, most. I mean, no and pressure. I, I know I'm putting in. you on the spot on the on the podcast, but no pressure. No, you know? listen, it's all good, baby. I can take the pressure. And you will be opening. I'm made for pressure. And you will accept our offer. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be an underplay. <laughs> Ethan Berlin. And I the will best. be in the tour bus. And yes. I will, you know, you know if you I get said. free bus, yeah, we're gonna we're, good. If we're we we pitched a tour bus. We have a tour bus. We'd all travel together. It'd be sick. Those are the best. If you it, honestly, any that make that takes it from like a maybe to a definite. That's, a, you get that's, a, that's part of the plan. Free. That's part of the plan. Yeah, let's take that out of her. All right, fuck yeah. Let's take it. We'll take it out of her growth next year. <laughs> we'll take it out of her. Profit, Dude, we're actually. easy to travel with. Easy, easy guys. I love it. This is gonna be great for you guys. Oh it's yeah, gonna be great. And us. So, us, but you know, we'll make it easy on you. The biscuits <laughs> uh, when you're just fucking going full of bees. Like, do you take like substances when you're doing that, or just straight sober? No. Well, sober, you know, they're, I, I've been known to drink tequila at the Disco Biscuits concert. Once I'm done, I never go on stage, you know, I go on stage completely clear eyed, cold sober, except in New Orleans, which is what I tell everybody. They're like, do you drink? I'm like, I drink in New Orleans, you know, but when I have to play at like 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., there's kind of, there's, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's when I lean on the tequila. But otherwise, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty, Look. it's a pretty clean existence for your girl. Yeah, no, just this. a little tequila. On the side, and by the way, like this much, like that's this sober much. in New Orleans. Listen to this angel. Yeah, she I know. Is, she is I'm from in. the heavens. I'm in. I'm. In. I am <laughs> fucking. I am in. I'm Team Karina, dude. I'm in. My new oh, favorite come on. jam band. New fair jam band. Oh, my only fair jam band. I'm still Umphreys, but uh, she's great. <laughs> Shut the fuck <laughs> up, Dick. Well, they're my friends. Oh, my God. All right, Karina, we love you. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. We're yeah, here we'll to, see you out here there. We're here to reach you on. Love you guys. Hopefully you're in see Denver you soon. Love you. All yeah, right, guys. Enjoy the Goose interview. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was a The tell-all. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That was funny. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. The sunshine. <laughs> the state. sunshine state. Yeah. With the boys of Goose. And I'm just going to rip the band-aid off. What the fuck happened, boys? <laughs> <laughs> next question. And next question. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Uh, it's going Sorry, well. what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? What? Uh, 
happen. Um, I can't wait. This place is amazing. What you guys? When did you guys build the studio? Like, uh, I got finished up early last year. Yeah, I was working on it for about a year. It's like, do you feel like you need, you want to have like a sanctuary inside your house? Do you like not going to a studio? Do you like it just being here? <laughs> yeah, I was just like wanted a place to get weird. Yeah, you know, and whack things really loud, and no yeah. one would yell. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. I mean, you are in the boonies, dog. Yeah, I, we were, we're driving through this thing. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, where the fuck does this homie live? <laughs> yeah. I got a dojo out here. Every man needs a dojo, and Rick has one. <laughs> I like the sticks. Yeah. I love it. You Were you guys raised in this area? Where? It, it's yeah, around here. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Pete? Yeah, around here. Yeah. Don't want to give out the location. Yeah. <laughs> we're not We're not going to I mean, Peter's sketchy like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you have me. fans like that or just like following you guys? No. Not yet. I don't know. What's the craziest uh, fan experience you had on the street walking? Um <laughs> I've been I've been like in the subway in New York and it maybe like 2 a.m. like kind of drunk and just like hanging out with friends and like some guy just like walked up to me like there was only like five people on the train he's so like making yo man can I get a selfie and I was just like dude <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> out of nowhere dude it's a mustache yeah. dog it's like that's what if so he didn't funny. know who you were and he's just a weird guy in the subway <laughs> like, and he was <laughs> <laughs> then he's like yo that, he's like yo that check out this guy looks really like Groucho Marx <laughs> <laughs> At Woodstock. Exactly. It's fucking wild, dude. I mean, you guys have been having such a run. How? What is this, like, uh, the new look of Goose? Like, how how are you approaching this in your head? I think, for me, there was a lot about, even just the first time we played with Cotter, where I was like, this is exciting and amazing, and yeah. there's, there's so much that could happen here. Right. And that, amongst... You know all the other things. Getting to know him, he's a great guy. It's that they've just like fueled the the excitement, and like you know, and then we got this. You yeah. know, even if even if it does take a long time to learn all the songs and rehearsing takes a while. You know, it's like you got to go through all these steps just to make sure you're show ready. Right. I was like, the music feels good, and you know, if you you could you could basically just start with that, and then it's awesome. Does it feel like it's like new tunes now? That's that's the thing I was like really excited about is just kind of reopening the catalog yeah. and you know going over everything and, and seeing what we want to you know keep doing the way we do it and what we want to change and you know what what can feel fresh and right kind of blowing the lid on the whole thing is, has been uh, a pretty exciting part of it yeah and it's got to be yeah it's got to be exciting because like when you when we're on tour you kind of go through the motions right like you're like working on the set and like every day you're trying to change up but like you're still in the motion of like the songs that you knew when you're when you guys created them it, it's got to be nice to like kind of switch it up and feel like oh i never heard that part in that song and now i i feel like we could grow it a little more touring touring does that in general too yeah. like you go into a tour like oh we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we're gonna do that, and then yeah and then like two weeks in you're like yeah let's just you know Maybe we'll just maybe we'll just do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's just see what happens. Yeah, I have sushi we'll reservations. Like, maybe we'll just go. And, I don't know. Had a burrito. I'm kind of yeah, tired. Exactly. Maybe we'll do it. I'm hungry. Can we just no. cut sound check? No, but it, there's there's like there's a lot of fire there. Um, the communication is 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 really strong, and and it feels like there's just a kind of a really unlimited runway of developing things and and creating that I mean, that's like what makes a band unique is that language the the ability to just like go in deep and go in the weeds and spend a lot of time working on one little thing right or whatever it is you know um and it, it feels like that space is there um and it's it's super yeah it feels feels really good yeah every other scene like if <laughs> if, if a drummer leaves the band or whatever happens in every other scene no one cares as much. <laughs> it's a fucking jam scene. Like yeah. they're like, oh my god, it's the end of the world, dude. The fucking drummer's gone. Like what the? Like it's I why is this jam scene so like that? I didn't go in the weeds at all, but I, I do remember at one point, like I think I tapped in like one time, and someone said this is worse than when Jerry died. Oh my! <laughs> and I was. No, I mean, it's, it's got to be. No, yeah, it's got to yeah, be. By the way, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. I think it was like a good joke that yeah. someone made. Yeah, exactly. I, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. That was a, it was a funny joke. Do you but, do you guys like? How do you guys approach criticism? Uh, I mean, it's 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 tough. Yeah, it's, it's tough to deal with. Um, I you know I read somewhere that you have to read if you read like 
one negative comment. You right. need to read seven positive ones right. to just nix that like negative one out of your mind or something. The, you know, like the, the mental effect of it is is pretty, you know, it's pretty, it's there. Yeah. yeah. The positive stuff isn't, isn't like it's not the solution. No. At all. No. It's like if you're susceptible to it, you know, like being like, oh, they said something good about me. Yeah. Yeah. Like that doesn't, that's not good either. That's no. also a problem. Yeah. Right. It's, right. It's kind of, you, you need to be like in your, in your world and, and just believe in what you're doing. And it's the, the noise is going to affect you. Like if you're, if it doesn't affect you, you're not a human being. Right? right. You know, we're humans. We're humans. It's, it's like, it fucks with you. Yeah. But it's also like, you know, try, like being in the weeds with it is not the solution or not not the way yeah and also like like i get more offended on criticism that i know is true <laughs> i yeah, i yeah. said that too i feel that I way like, too i'm yeah. like damn you're totally yeah, yeah. right bro yeah, yeah, yeah. you're totally fucking That's right the, the ones that get me are the like fuck dude i hate the mirror i, agree. <laughs> I also hate like, the mirror you know what i mean the mirror yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's also like what if the positive people had as much energy and spent as much time commenting as all the negative people. It's the negative people have 10 times as much energy to do it all day. It's a positive. Where do they get like, all that energy? It seems like there's way yeah. more of them, but there really isn't. They're just taking lots of supplements. And well, they're, yeah, they're, they're not getting a lot of sleep. Angry, either, so. angry it's like creatine, like yeah, angry creatine. Angry, yeah, exactly. Stuff, GNC, like yeah. stuff. You, you wish the positive <laughs> people had that. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like they look in the mirror like, fuck off, everybody, yeah. like these people. Yeah. But it's it, it's got to be, it's got to be, it feels like it has to put a lot of pressure on you guys and like useless pressure like we're at the end of the day we're just making music man yeah <laughs> dude just trying to like just trying just to trying to fun. ride the dragon <laughs> exactly for fuck's sake yeah. like why yeah, everyone take i this is the thing about america that really drives me wild like i mean i love that everyone puts music on such a high pedestal but it puts pressure on these humans making this fucking music yeah you wonder what that has on the creative impact because yeah. when you write your first songs and you're becoming a musician when you're younger there's none of that at all no you know and Best. it's and it's just so, so happy it's so, it's so quiet you're and you're just able Shit. to make music <laughs> i missed when i sucked <laughs> me too dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sucking kind of rules good yeah, times exactly. right. you know we still suck but, so, yeah. yeah so as you write new music now like how do you how do you just stay present with writing stuff that you want to write not writing stuff for what that you think other people will like is that a ever I, I feel like i'm i feel like every song i work on I'm, i need to like relearn how to write now. right like I, you know like yeah. it's a, I'm right now I'm, I'm like trying to figure out how to write yeah like what are you writing about um i don't you know that's there's kind of i've gravitated more towards like abstract kind of things where mm -hmm. it's not like this song's about this. It's more just like, you know, some Jackson Pollock kind of approach. Yeah. Just like throwing different ideas that are, are meaningful, but there's not like a, this is about the day I went to yeah. go to the store yeah. to get some tortillas, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I used to be able to like write about my dog or something, yeah. you know, but it's, it's uh, now it's kind of just like uh, collage. Yeah. Thing. What about you, Pete? I mean, there was. It's nice to have time at home where you have no obligations or nothing going on, and that is the time where I find the most creative inspiration, or mm -hmm. just you know, back to back days of just going in. Um, and I got maybe like one or two of those weeks earlier this year. Yeah, <laughs> they're <laughs> few. They're few and far between. I'll, I mean, clap, to, I'll clap to one week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's it go. happened <laughs> once. It was sick. Let's go. <laughs> like being in the army. <laughs> once it was sick. It like was being sick. in the army reserves or something. Yeah. One two week in, two yeah. weeks a year. One week in a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard when you have to play so many shows, and now we have to do a lot of rehearsals with Cotter. So yeah. I mean, things things pile up. But um, having that time was really beneficial for for me this year, and allowed me to like just tap into things and ideas that I had been having over like the last year yeah. of like just new styles, um, ways to get integrate synths and stuff like that. Synths. Uh, synths. <laughs> yeah. Synthesizer. Music of the future and sense. Sense. Yeah. sense. Were you guys, do you guys feel like you guys were getting a little burnt out? Well, yeah. There's like, there's like layers to that. Yeah. Right? You know, like uh, there's, there's so many ways in which someone can get burnt out. You yeah. get burnt out physically, you get burnt out emotionally. You know, there's right. like, 
it's a lot of different things. So like the the physical thing kind of ebbs and flows, you know. Yeah. Um, but like being, getting creatively burnt out is is like a bigger a bigger thing. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. I like, think I think I think we're at a point now. You know, there was a it was a big big thing that just happened. And um, what was that, guys? I, don't, I, don't, I haven't been on the internet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, he changed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, next question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's I mean, yeah. that's gotta be hard. And but also, like, I don't know. I get sick of my fucking band all the goddamn time. <laughs> I see them all the time, and I'm sick of the. He knows that I was talking about how fucking <laughs> sick me. I am. Not me. So like, I'm not trying to man. project. That's why you're on it's, podcast it's easy, tour. It's easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on podcast tour. You're like, you need to get sick of yourself. Yeah, that's what you I mean. Like. How do we get out of our own work, way? Yeah, you work on something a you lot, know? and then it's just kind of like, all right, you need you you need to you need the like the well to replenish itself. Yeah, Can yeah. Only, yeah. How do you do that though? How do you guys do that? I, I think it's I think it's something we're it's going to take. We're probably going to spend the next five to ten years fi- working on that, right. figuring right. figuring out how to like be balanced and be able to to be creative in the amount that we need to be creative and then to output the amount that we need to output it's a it's a balance and people it's unique it's it's like an individual mm-hmm. um and there's you can see people there's a lot of people whose like careers i see it in their careers where you know they started doing well and then they were like what the fuck yeah and then like you know five to ten years went by and then they kind of built their thing around they're who they are right and um what their needs are in terms of space creativity and just they found their balance and implemented it and it takes time to do that so i I think it's just like a you know big period of trial and error to to figure out what that looks like for us yeah it's like the power of saying no you gotta say no dude yeah it's hard to do it's hard to do when now you're making fucking money now it's like fuck dude they offered me that much money like that's like (laughs) yeah it's hard to say no so how do you like because now you're getting more comfortable in your lives and stuff, and I feel like you you can you feel like you have control of dictating your own destiny now instead of like having. Remember, like ten years ago when you had to fucking play in Kansas and you had to play in yeah. fucking Poughkeepsie in the van, dude, like or fucking Cervantes, you know, side right. room. Right. You can kind of dictate how how you approach your career now, or do you still? It's definitely it's, push it's, forward. There's more of that, but you know, it's we're still. I think we're still trying to find the balance still. Yeah. And this year we're trying a thing where it's like, we're going on the road for a month straight and then taking off two months and then same kind of thing. So right. it's like, that's a little bit different in the past. We would be on for maybe three weeks, take two weeks off back on for two weeks. Right. So we're trying and make a new touring strategy where we're just on for a month. Yeah. And see how that goes. Yeah. You know, are you guys it, nervous about that? It's a long time. Is it? Dude, don't, don't you do like eight yeah. weeks or some shit? I, I, I'm you just trying that. to pump you guys. Just, up. No, 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 I know. Like, I'm just like, yeah, the four is so soft compared yeah. to. I mean, you. Yeah, I you tour do, all the time. You do crazy stuff. Yeah, three months. Yeah, so we can't. But I'm tired. I'm old now. We are, how old are you guys now? 31. 33. Yeah, we're all the same age. But like, I feel like we're. <laughs> how old are you? I'm 36. Nice. That's I'm oh, yeah, Same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. basically, you're saying the departure of your drummer. Was because you guys were vegetarians. <laughs> I am not vegetarian. <laughs> I just want to. It's just so funny, all the conspiracies, dude. It's oh, like, yeah. I can't believe, like, people need fucking jobs, dude. Yeah. <laughs> people need a jobs. Hobby. Uh, Get a fucking hobby. Kiss yeah. somebody. Do something. Kiss, kiss somebody. somebody. <laughs> we all like, need were you just like looking at these rumors and like, what the my fuck? mom was telling me about some. What they say? My what mom the... was getting a kick out of some of them. Oh like what? What was like the a, weirdest a, a, a rumor? Christmas, she was she'd like be looking at her phone and just start giggling, <laughs> and then be like, "Check this out," and like tell me some crazy story. I'd be like, "Whoa, how do you guys not read all this shit? This is wild." I I that was I uh, definitely checked out for a while. You, you had, had to. I checked out. Yeah. You had to. Yeah, had to. absolutely had to. You had to because you like you got to make your point. Like the statement, you were, I thought the statement was very elegant and it was very, it was good. It was, yeah, perfectly proper. Said it all, meant it. Said it all. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. Dude. That's your brother. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. fucking hard, dude. Been through yeah. a lot. Yeah. So it's like, I, you know, I. It's like kind of like I don't know. It's like kind of like the death of, of somebody you really love. You know, in a sense, you guys are still friends, of course. <laughs> oh, but like for me, like 
It's it's hard. Oh. It's hard for me to think of the yeah, future. Jeez, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but yeah, yeah. yeah. No, th- I'm not saying like I, I physical saying, death. Like the loss. Like the loss yeah, 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 of yeah, someone yeah. that's always with you in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're with people in the band. You're with yeah. them like more than half the year, easily. You're with yeah. these people more than our our girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, I think of like... It's a, a, it's a, a, it's a relationship in a pressure cooker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, And you can't have sex to calm down the relationship. <laughs> well, you can. I mean, yeah, but you don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm not speaking of what you guys do. But yeah. Well, we fuck each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not this band. I'm not this band. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, have yeah, to yeah. do that. <laughs> I don't have to kiss them. Only people in this band have to kiss Yeah, I make my band kiss me on the lips. <laughs> That's good. Just bonding. I think so. It's okay to kiss your bros, dude. Definitely. I'm kiss not your bros. It. I just don't want to do it. It's like the vegetarian thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's, yeah. Not, you know, it's not a choice for everybody. It's not for everyone. Yeah. So yeah. when the decision was made that you guys uh, were going to part ways and you started the audition process, I'm so curious about this. How many drummers hit you up? 2,000? <laughs> no. 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 I mean, people yeah. got in touch like after we made the announcement, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was like it was a it was a long process yeah like the last year not internally you know like we were there was a lot of conversations we had a lot of com- we talked to you know we had a lot of conversations with ben throughout the course of the year and yeah we were like you know felt that things weren't working and we're trying to trying to you know for years have been you know working on different things and trying to like move in the direction that we feel called to move in mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing and um there are a lot of conversations and uh, both with and and without Ben, and and um, and you know, towards the end of the year, we like reached a point where we thought it would be a good idea to like play with a couple people to see if things, some of the things we were feeling, were true, and you know that that kind of that kind of informed um, where we ended up going, right? But well, um, God, it's been a hard decision. It was the hard. It was super hard, it's, dude. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's, yeah. you don't, it's not what you set out to do no. when you start your band. Yeah. Your you know brothers. I mean? Yeah. No one gets married, gets married looking to get divorced. You know what yeah. I mean? No one's thinking about their divorce on the wedding day. Right. <laughs> right. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, actually. Yeah. I got to stop thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm alone. Yeah, every exactly. Time. I'm like, how am I going to fuck this one up? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, hey, bud. Um, so, so how did you, did you, what, Cotter was the, the instant. You felt it right away with him, or did it take a couple adjustments? There was certain... Fe- I mean, there was definitely, like, certain things that we were like, wow, right away, like, feeling great. Right. You know, I was like, this is... You know, it, there was moments, especially, like, in the in the first few minutes of, like, jamming with him, where we were, like, looking at each other being like, dude, this is sick. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had... We, we, we played with other people, too. And it was like kind of a process of like, okay, you know, let's really like compare, you know, and make sure we're making the right decision. Right. Because it's, you know, it's a big decision and it's going to change somebody's life. Right. As well as our own, you know, it's going to, it's, you know, had a big impact. So the moment I saw it change his life was your acoustic show band and he's like high man in the tower <laughs> really? doing the fucking princess diana wave dude that was uh, i'm like oh shit this life completely changed he's just like kind of like humble he's like, <laughs> like i don't even know the gig yet. Or not. he just like hey guys how you doing yeah. right before that like, was he nervous backstage like, yeah he was he was kind of like all right i i want like, to i want to come see you guys play at the thing but like i don't want to right i don't want to like make a scene and i don't i don't want i really want to like you know, I don't know. I don't. He was, he was afraid of the, you know, Pretty pressure self-aware. and the noise and stuff. And like, we got out there. Peter blew up his spot so <laughs> high. There's our There's new drummer. drummer! Yeah. <laughs> He's Be single. It. He's single. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, it's savage. He was just. He was saying, with his girlfriend. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I did. He was with his girlfriend. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh man, I would. My heart would race. I'm dude. not up in the it's lower like, yet. It's like, uh, I don't know. Like, you break up with someone. And then you finally go on a date with another person and you go out in your t- small town and you're just walking <laughs> together. Like, like, oh, that's, oh that's here we weird. go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird, dude. Yeah. So while, the, so now you're, okay, now let's go through the process. Like, what do you look for? What were you looking for in a drummer that you were missing? If you could answer that. Um, that's, that's, you know. I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that should just be the answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's your favorite fruit, guys? Do you yeah, guys, yeah. Like, <laughs> guys like guys like yeah. <laughs> Just, you got? I like Bush. everybody. I don't know, but I'm not saying in like a what you what you didn't like about Ben. It's more of like moving on, moving yeah. forward with the future of Goose. What like, what goal? are you looking for, and yeah. what is your goal? What was your goal with finding a new band member? There, there's a bunch of stuff we love about Cotter. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, there's there's he's doing a lot of stuff. He's really active, but for some reason, like we all feel really relaxed, and and there's like a ton of space and freedom. Yeah. Um, and we're able to relax and like the, a big thing that I really want to feel is, is, um, like I can do nothing or I can do a little like simple things, you yeah. know, music, the best, most of my favorite music is when simple ideas feel amazing. Right. And, um, and just speak like they, they come from inside of you, you know, right. that's, that's the thing that I am looking for when I'm playing and when we're playing when we're searching for something just like melodies ideas rhythms feels that are you know some like compli i like complicated stuff too complicated yeah. stuff is sweet and like you know spend time working on it and the uh, crazy chops are are sick but you know like yeah. the this like the the some of the most meaningful stuff to me is um just comes from a, a simpler place um and yeah, just being in that state where you're able to let things come through you instead of, um, you know, it's like it's like it's like riding a wave instead of like pushing something to to get there. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's like letting letting it happen. When you know, playing with Cotter kind of feels like that. Like we're we just like lean back and the thing just goes. Yeah, like we don't the music go goes on its own. We don't need to, we don't need to make it. We don't need to push it. Yeah, we don't need to like you know, pour fuel on it or anything like that. It just like, it just happens. Was he an emo kid? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, he feel, he plays drums like he used to love like Taking Back Sunday really? or something. I, dude, kick drum. The kick drum is fucking pop, dude. Did we not all have an emo phase? <laughs> dude, we all did. That's what I'm saying. We're all Andy's the same one right age. now, actually. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going through another emo phase. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ready to go. Dude, I'm going through it. I love oh, pop punk. Oh, right your next now, song's dude. kind of, remember you played it for me? I was like, that sounds like an emo song. Well, Early 2000s. Like was yeah. into that stuff. The used. The used, right? Like Warp Tour. Taking feels like a, he talks about used. he talks about going to Warp Tour. A bunch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's why if, if he feels like one of those Warp Tour drummers. Wow. Yeah. He did. He I fucking. I fucking knew it, dude. Yeah, you knew. <laughs> I was it. like, I get this dude in here. Yeah. Yeah. I will talk my head off off some yeah. yellow card and some used. Yellow shit. card. Is that about the God. violin? Yellow what? card had the violin. <laughs> I used to hey, love California that. so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like ska music. It's yeah, like, exactly. ah, da, da. Yes, yes, yes. Really like, fuck you, dad. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you, dad. My dad That's only got me the, the mid level Porsche. <laughs> 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 My dad only gave me the 2008 sedan Porsche. <laughs> but the hooks were fire. But the hooks were fire. <laughs> <laughs> the hooks were so fire. The song titles were long. Song oh, titles were long. Like the first Fall Out Boy record? <laughs> yeah. Which was. Fucking sick. It dude. was sick. Uh, Everything was a hook. Everything was a hook. It was yeah, hook it was after so, hook. Like an Urban Melville right there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 19th century literature uh, reference, guys. Just <laughs> Yeah, dude. Deep cut. Deep dude, cut. Dude, dude plays and he means it. Yeah. You know, he like everything he plays is like. <clears throat> it's intention. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he, he fully surrenders to the music. That's That was evident from the get-go. Oh. Who taught you guys intention? Hmm. Can you teach intention? I don't know. Like work ethic? Do you like maybe you, like you look a role model who kind of taught you how to, or like yet you learned from listening to them or maybe it was a mom, a parent or like how did you, a lot of people don't live with intention. They just mm. live. And that's cool too. But to really make powerful music together, like you said, you want to have the breathing and you want to have, there's cool big moments, but there's also moments where we don't need to be e play every fucking note yeah. and let it breathe. Yeah, I think that's part of intention. You know, I, I this reminds me of my grandmother on my mom's side, who was very always about family, and like that was s s the most important thing in her life. Right, and always taught us that growing up. And she only lived like ten minutes down the road, so we see her all the time. Um, she was super Italian. Yeah, and uh, you're Italian. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah. I'll clap to that. Let's go. Oh, really? No way. I'm Italian. 100? 
I'm 80. <laughs> All right, 80's good. I'm 80. 80's good. You know, I'm Jewish. You know, right. On the ish side. I thought you were half right. and half. No, my mom's a little Italian too. Oh, wow. My dad's full. Um, my grandfather's yeah, Luigi. Your dad. <laughs> Luigi <Nice>. Frasco. <laughs> you know that's Coach's real name? Luigi? L- Luigi. His grandma's Gra- Mario. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm not Italian. Peach. Classic joke. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your grandmother. What'd she teach you? Uh, I think it was just a lot of loyalty to, to your family and love and, and how to treat people. She was always so kind to, to everyone. Right. And, you know, she lived a really long, full life. And, you know, she had a major impact on me. And it was when I was growing up, like, she taught me a lot of songs. We would sing together a lot. My mom's also a music teacher. Oh. So, like, I had a lot of music going on in my life. Yeah. Um, my aunt's a music teacher. My sister is now, oh, too. Oh, shit, your family's all into music. Oh. There's a lot of, like, yeah, but on the teaching side, which yeah. is cool. You know, they were all about, like, lear- you know, helping people learn how to play and, and connect with music yeah. and movement and dancing and all these things. So... That was a big part of my life and, and really brought music into it in, in such a nice, cool way where I was just exposed to the joyful side of music and, yeah. and what that meant. And it was just something we did. At holidays, we'd all sing around the piano, like kind of that thing. So That's it, fucking yeah, cute as shit, was, dog. Good, yeah, just <laughs> really? Like, really? Just like, yo, <laughs> yo, yo like baby. Cool. baby. Uh, so that. No, just like, um, <laughs> none of them were a choir director or like a band director, but they're like, Teaching music for children. Oh, like pretty private much. lesson, kind of like. Yeah, uh, yeah. My aunt taught at like uh, elementary school. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, in Norwalk for like t- thirty years. Crazy. Uh, my mom taught in like a private uh, company, but it was it was all like age two to ten. Oh, my sister's doing the same thing now. So it was all for children, pretty much. Very patient people, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, yes, for the sure. Thing ever. That must be cool. Yeah. Like they're all teachers, and they they do the art of teaching music, and they see one of their ultimate students fucking rocking out all around the country. I mean, they must be really proud of you, Pete. Uh, they, yeah, my mom is, just, is super proud of me. Do they come yeah. out to the shows? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Are they like groupies? Like they like, <laughs> not, not like groupies, like they're <laughs> incestual groupies. My, but mom, like... my mom will listen to this podcast. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, she will? Definitely. So, yeah. Did you ever like catch them like crying? Being so proud of you, like seeing you play like that ham, the, the, seeing those shows like Hampton oh, Calls, yeah, seeing, seeing you guys all in that fucking big old what it looked like a spaceship. Hampton yeah, Calls, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, dude. I, don't, I, don't think, I haven't seen Mo cry, but Reed just cried, right? Yeah, my mom's. Yeah, I've, I visibly see my mom crying during a show. Yeah, yeah. Really? really, yeah. I mean, you know, she's so happy. I, I for for fucking me and awesome, and like I I love having her there. It's always awesome when she's yeah. at the shows and. My mom just yeah. fought cancer, and wow. uh, and she can't, I can't, I wrote I've been, I wrote this song for her seven years ago called "Some Days" when I found out she had cancer, and she's just beat leukemia, and she was at my show at the Ogden, and that was the first time I got to present it to her. Wow. And I was playing it every night, and she's crying. I'm fucking crying, dude. Oh my it's just god, like, it's just amazing. I don't know. Do you ever think about having kids? Sure, I do. Yeah. I have a lot recently. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you got to think like in that, cre- <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Very yeah, yeah, pretty dude. prospective women out there. Okay. Whoa. Sorry. Hello. Sorry. Next found question. Out some hot news that fucking mysterious hot Rick is single, dog. <laughs> so I shouldn't say that because they're going to, I don't want, hey, what? check your condoms. No, I don't want anyone poking Rick's holes fine. in your condom. You're good. I got, You're good. You're yeah, a sensible guy. It's hot. It's a, the hot guy. He's busy. He's building cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got cabinets. Yeah. <laughs> The we got, women we got go chickens, cr- we got cabbage. Yeah, it's wild. Dog. But no, they love I, Trevor, dude. It's Trevor, it's all about Trevor's words. I mean, he's mysteriously hot too. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. bass player, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's very hot. Don't he's play coy over there. You know who Trevor's. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I can remember that's the Jeff's bass player. player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which one's Trevor? Poster tearing down <laughs> my bedroom. <laughs> but getting back to that. the bass player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But getting back to that idea of like watching a human grow. And and then they become an adult and you're playing music and just to see them succeeding in life is got to be like the ultimate feeling for a parent. It's got to feel good. It's got to. Yeah. yeah. I've gathered uh, from what I've seen, like um, for a lot of people, you know, not everyone, but for a lot of people, it just changes yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, sure. So I, I feel like I don't know. I don't know what that's like. Right. But I'd like to find out. Yeah. How long have you been single or alone? <laughs> um, 
like a year and a half. Yeah. Maybe a little more. Do you like it or you feel a little lonely? Um I I'm not really built for like the single thing, I don't think. Yeah. I'm not like a Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> little tomcat I'm not, I'm not, yeah. Rick the tomcat yeah, out it's there not just, really my thing no um, sound bite for this I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I can't what is it bum, bum, bum. <laughs> no that's good I mean a lot of people I was a hoe you know I was Were a you, hoe yeah good for you man I mean I was I, mean, I just didn't was. know I had intimacy yeah I'm still <laughs> what was he <laughs> did yeah what no, was I've that had, I'm, I'm hooking up less but I I had intimacy problems I was I felt like I didn't have confidence in myself, so I felt like I needed to get love through just um, intimacy in other ways, like short-term intimacy because I was always on the road. Mm. So that was more of like insecurity in my end. So, But it's not for everyone, and it makes you more lonely, I realize. If you're just doing random hookups, it just makes you more lonely. I want substance, you know? It is a, it is a strange feeling. Yeah, yeah, like it's got to be nice to have you, substance in your life, you know? Even when you're coming nice. from a good place. Yeah. yeah. You know, even when you're... You know, yeah, it's not. You want to, yeah. yeah, have a good interaction with someone, yeah. whatever. It's still, it still can be lonely. Yeah, it can get lonely saying goodbye three times a week. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. True. I hate goodbyes. You say exactly. I hate, yeah. yeah, I hate goodbyes. When you're I, out, you I, say I goodbye a lot more. I don't fuck it with it either, dude. Yeah. How hard was it to say goodbye to Ben? <laughs> it was super hard. Yeah, yeah. super Sucks. hard. I mean, yeah, in one way, you know, yeah. of like, but. You know, like I, you know, I hope be like to continue to be friends with Ben. You yeah. know, so it's not like it's Those, goodbye. It's not like goodbye forever. No, you know what I mean. It's, so, have you guys written new music <laughs> with Cotter yet? Uh, there's been some shit. <laughs> yeah, you excited? Yeah, dude. No, it's it's. Um, I mean, with, with the the rehearsals, you know, we've been like focusing on getting all the the catalog in place. Yeah, but in the process of doing that like I- ideas just keep happening yeah so yeah you know we're not we're not in the place where we are you know fully have the bandwidth to like chase everything down yeah. which is uh because you know we need we have we have to get we have to get from a to b we have actually you know haven't had a ton of time of rehearsal so yeah. far it's been you know only like a week or two yeah sort of collectively yeah um but yeah, it's just like a lot of things have happened already. It's just like these like seeds keep popping up. It's like, oh, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah. So now it's, you know, we got to do. Oh, like you have these seeds. Ideas, oh, seeds, like song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they're just. They're, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. They're yeah. popping up like hotcakes. You know? they, they're yeah. popping up like they're popping up like hotcakes. <laughs> the seeds are everywhere. They're popping. That's, oh, that's exciting. I would be, I'd be so nervous. I, I think, I think of Cotter, like, I think of the, you remember when Popeyes made the chicken sandwich? Yeah. And then, <laughs> you mean the got, greatest moment in the last four years? Yeah. And it was so super packed <laughs> yeah. at all the Popeyes. And there's this p- meme of this lady who works at Popeyes, just like, yeah, taking a deep breath. Like, yeah. Fuck, what is this? <laughs> so, Carl, we have 75 songs, and yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to learn them in like two weeks. You know, he's like, just, I would be chain yeah. smoking <laughs> cigarettes, like a, just one puff. And, <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, but he took the challenge, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, I the love- last last week or last last ten days, I I texted him. I was like. You know, Vermont got some powder. Like yeah. he was gonna go. I, I was like, I'm sure. Surely Cotter's going to snowboard right now. I texted him. He's like, No, dude. I've been locked in my room for like the last ten days. I'm like, I'm nails, nails to the grindstone right here. Or with you, nails to the grindstone. How right do you here. meet him? Yeah. Like, where? How'd you meet him? I uh, I met him way back in the day. Uh, his band Swimmer. Oh yeah. Um, was playing shows with my band Great Blue. Uh-huh. We like had crossed paths a bunch. Um, and. Like randomly at some gig in 2017, like after they played or something, I was like, "Dude, we should like totally start a band sometime." <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, that would be sweet." And yeah. then I think like six months later, I joined Goose, and that that all happened. You know, I I can't even like remember what it what Damn, it was like. That's, so, the universe is wild. It like is, that, it is crazy. Yeah, and he, you know, he, they were always just the homies because yeah. we were in like this air, like New England, trying to play shows at the same venues. Mm-hmm. And struggling yeah. because it's super tough to do that and mm. book all your own shows and all that stuff. And yeah, like they they were a sick band, so it was it was cool. I love watching them play then. Love yeah. watching them play now. It's really rad. Dude. I forget what year it was, but the first time 
I met him or saw him. Uh, was at Nectar's, uh, and uh, yeah, that like they were. This it was a swimmer set, and you weren't. You were, I was not there. You were in the band, but not at that show. Yeah, I think it was like one of the only shows I've missed since I joined because I had to go to like and, a cousin's wedding. And Dolliver played with us. Yeah, so then oh. we were like opening for Swimmer. Yeah, at yeah. okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I just like you know sat there. It was like you know probably like a Wednesday or something, yeah. kind of quiet night, and I was just like sitting at one of those bar tables right in front of the stage and um, getting blasted by Sergey's. Loud ass, sick <laughs> ass mix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, dude, that dude's deaf as he, fuck, dude. Yeah. He <laughs> sends it, dude. Whoa. Yeah. But it like, it sounded so good. Yeah. The kit was like, it was, you know, it was like permeating my cells. Uh. Um, but dude was just like, it, it was just a very impactful experience. I was glued to him the entire set. Um, there, he was, he was just like weaving. He told us, it was just like this, this, it was a journey. Yeah. You know, and he he was uh, very very deep in the music. And what's in the water in Vermont that creates all these amazing musicians, dude? Weed, weed. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just because it's cold and you're just locked in and you just like kind of strap in, or like there's so many know. brilliant musicians yeah. coming out of Vermont, dude? It's crazy. Yeah. Or even already yeah. Connecticut. This whole area is like. Is it? Did you guys go to school for music? I did. Where'd you go? <laughs> I went to. <laughs> oh, the B word. Yeah, yeah. The B word. Yeah, we're talking about yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> it means Boston College, guys. He's talking about Boston. Well, it was just funny because we were talking about that right before the podcast. Yeah, I was like, yeah, Berkeley. I went to Berkeley. That's why. Like, <laughs> did Connor yeah, go? Berkeley. Did you go to Berkeley too? No, I went to NYU in New York. Hell Ooh, yeah. artsy. Oh. I'll clap for that. No, it's way heavier. No, I mean, yeah, it's a sick school, but yeah, I think the trick is just like finding your way there yeah. which is really hard to do right both times i went i I, <laughs> I, I I like did a few years and then took a few years off and went back and finished and both times i like kind of went in with some like sauce like creatively yeah. and then came out with no sauce oh and then, man like, they had, just drained had, you yeah like oh. you you learn you know if you practice you learn you get better you hone right. But like, I, and everyone's different. Some people do super well in that environment. Yeah. But I, I just got neutered. Oh uh, and God. both times it took me. Like, How'd you get out of that funk? It took a while. It was different both times. But I mean, it, it probably took like a year or two each time to just like start writing again. Shit. The second time in particular, I was like going into it. I was writing a lot. I was like, that was one of my most like flowing periods. And yeah. I went in and done. And then like. What do you think it was? I, it's so hard to tell, man. Um, I don't know. It's it's like I mean, it's got to be the pressure, right? Of like pressure, having to perform on yeah. your instrument. The subconscious comparing yeah, yourself be, right? yeah. to like everything going on around you. So much ego flying around. Ego for sure. Twenty year old guitar players, just three thousand of them, and that's insane. And they all just like shred. Yeah. <laughs> they're all, <laughs> yeah. They're all it's like who am yeah, I? Yeah, fuck that, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Was, it, I grew up out here, like just like hanging out in the woods and like whittling sticks and like yeah. smoking weed and writing songs, and yeah. then like it was just like it was it was a way to like learn about myself, right. you know. It was like it's a very individual journey, like process and journey. Yeah. Um, and then like putting a band together and doing that was like the coolest, most magical thing in the world. Yeah. And uh, some people do super well in like an environment. It's uh, Jeff. Oh, cool. Uh, Get his ass in here, too. Yeah. I got some questions for that motherfucker. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I thought he was the hunk. <laughs> he is hot, dude. Yeah. I, I saw him with a leather jacket I mean, once and like a Fu Manchu he's mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Model. But the bass player has that. looks. He's, he's got, dabbled. He's got looks. He's got, got the vibe. And his hair's growing now. He's, oh, yeah. he's got long yeah. hair. Yeah. No, Jeff's pretty. Yeah. But go back to this, this idea. So it's like, maybe it's... Because learning an instrument is so individual. Mm -hmm. Like, when you put it in a group setting, it, it kind of... I don't know. It, maybe it fucks up the creative process. Uh, just a hair. It's, it, it, it's tough to like generalize because some people. Yeah. I, I saw some people really thrive there. Like yeah. some people who are just yeah. around a bunch of musicians mm -hmm. and other things, and like in that environment, they it like it inspires them and, yeah. and brings brings stuff out of them. Whereas others, you know, just kind of like makes you feel smaller or right. less inspired and right. less connected to your thing your your voice or your muse whatever it totally. is you know did you feel like that peter 
Uh, at NYU or did you have a great, great at experience? At NYU it was different because I really didn't have to do performances on my main instrument for a grade, I feel like. There was, you know, mostly most of the grade was just learning about like ear training and music theory. And then like out of class, I would go home and like play my guitar and like apply what I had learned. You know, it was like, it was like still my guitar and like my writing was like kind of outside of the, the, the school aspect. It was more still like after school. Um, and maybe that has something to do with it. We were talking about this last week in the studio, someone who works with us, you know, um, in like a, you know, media kind of uh, capacity was talking about like, just there's when you, when you have something that you have to do for income or you're going to school, like the, the big thing, you know, when you're a kid, you have to go to school and do all the school shit. And then you can't wait to get home and play your instrument and do right. your thing and like chase your dragon, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, there's, there's always this thing of when you're in that situation of, uh, well, if only I didn't have to do this other thing and I could do my dragon mm, all the time, right. then everything would be unlocked and like right. it would be the best. I would be living my prime. And in my experience, like that's not the case. No. Because I, when I have something else that I'm doing that I don't really want to be doing, it fuels the creativity. It fuels like that release. Yeah, or, or it's that idea of... Uh... We always think that the grass is greener. Sure. When right. it's like, when we're not doing the thing where we are like, oh, maybe it's better the other way. Right. Then you do the other way. It's like, fuck, I wish I went back yeah, to that no, other yeah, way. Yeah. You I, know? I, yeah. like, I like go back to flipping tacos. Connor, co can we get Connor in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connor, <laughs> Connor, get Connor over here. Ladies and gentlemen, Goose's new drummer. Connor, come on over here, buddy. Let's, have, let's I want to, <laughs> Diane Sawyer of the please. music scene Trust right me, now. Don't let's, take a good spot. Let's hear it here. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I'm Andy. <laughs> sit in the chair, buddy. Sit there, sit there. Here we are. Damn, this guy's hot too. You just get hot people in your band. What's up, Mark. Connor? Hey, Connor, how you doing? Andy. Good. I'm Nick. Um, hey, good. That's Nick. Andy, good. Hey. Here, take this mic. Drive. So, here, take a mic. <laughs> take a mic for a second. Here, we're just throwing you right into the fucking oh, hey. lion's den. How you Dude, doing, buddy? Sick pants. Pretty good. Thanks. How is your brain? Are you okay? Is everything good? Are well, you, you going to have a mental breakdown? Give me, give me all the details. I just. Finished a five-hour drive, so my brain's a little scattered. <laughs> but other than that, I'm great. I love it, dude. Yeah. What was it like at the Capitol Theater? I was just talking about this when these guys were playing. You were up there like great Gatsby style, dog, uh -huh. and you're with your girl, and they start slow clapping like, and like <laughs> there you're like looking around. Oh shit, I'm the drummer now. <laughs> yeah, that what was, was wild. that like? That was totally surreal. Felt like a moment in a dream. Yeah. And then when it was happening. I didn't really know know what to do with my hands, so I was just kind of like princess waving. <laughs> you did princess Diana, dude. I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, this is fucking amazing." Yeah. I thought I was gonna like it was gonna I was gonna fly under the radar for that show. Yeah. It was actually my first show at the Cap ever. Yeah. Wow. So you never been there. I played Garcia's a bunch. Yeah. So I've like popped in every time, and I'm like, one day yeah. I'll play you. Now we're playing there. And my first now you're playing there yeah. four nights. I saw you just announced that today. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Pretty cool. Here we are. Yeah. Just rip the fucking band-aid right off, baby. Get yeah. out there and yeah. fucking blow loads all over the fucking place. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I want you out there fucking just destroying these motherfuckers. Yeah. Okay. That's what it's all about. Well, I was I had this blow theory. Loads. Are you an emo kid? No. When you were a kid. Oh. Warp tour. No, I was warp tour. Yeah. I was more of like a, a pop punk kid. Fuck it, I called it, dude. Yeah. I'm clapping for myself. <laughs> <laughs> what were your bands? What were my bands? Oh. Well, my first band ever that I was in was like a Green Day Sum 41. I fucking love it. Good Charlotte kind of vibe. <laughs> That's fucking good. Good Charlotte. Wow. Yeah. I hear uh, it in your in your kick Cameron drum, Diaz, dude. No. I hear it in your kick drum. He's got a lead on your kick drum. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Warp tour kick drum. Well, you, I said I you had a warp tour, tour That's kick the drum. Greatest compliment anyone's ever given dude, me. Dude, I love. Uh, <laughs> you're, like, yeah. you're like, but um, it's it's amazing. I, you really, I I've been watching your. I watched the Chateau session, and that was fucking sick. And then you you're a great player. Thanks. Does this gig make you want to smoke 20,000 cigarettes? <laughs> 20,000 cigarettes. <laughs> 20, dude, I'm sick of I would smoke 20,000 Oh, I would smoke 20,000 Like, learning 80 songs in 10 days, dude, is yeah, a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was actually days. nine days. Were you listening to Goose the whole way down to the drive down? Yes. <laughs> Five hours of your own band. <laughs> oh, God. Look I've been listening <laughs> nonstop. You have, yeah. You just because there's stuff. a lot of there's a lot of nuances to all the tunes, which is great. Yeah, and like being in a jam band before, 
where I was like writing a lot of the tunes. I appreciate all that stuff. And I just want to, yeah, I just want to have it so deep in my brain that I don't have to think about it when I'm, when I'm playing through. Yeah. And Do you overthink a lot or are you an overthinker? No, not really. Especially when I'm playing music. That's kind of why I love playing music is because it is the opposite of overthinking or it should be. That's the ideal situation. It's yeah. like you lose yourself in it. That's what Ricky was saying, how it's like so natural. It's not, it's like a, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, a, it's clear, you know. It's clear. He, he goes into the mode and that's it. Are you guys like in this like romance right now? It's like the the honeymoon era. <laughs> yeah. You guys feeling good and everything is good. You guys excited about the cap? Are you nervous about the cap? Are you ready? I'm stoked about the cap. It's going to be fucking awesome. Four nights? I'm stoked. Four nights. That's an underplay for you guys too. So it's going to be like, it's going to be cozy. Lottery only. I think, cap right? is never Sunday, an underplay. Sunday really? Wednesday. Yeah, dude. It's the know. cap. It's, yeah, it's just like, it's the, it's the zone. Yeah. You have to win the lottery to get tickets, I saw, or something, or something like that, right? How many Fan Instagram yeah, follows all, all did lottery. you get yeah. right when they named you? Like 3,500. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. Uh -huh. I spent like three hours texting people back that night until my fingers <laughs> were literally tired. Off. And fingers were bleeding. Yeah, oh my fingers my. were bleeding. <laughs> and, oh my, get on the couch, too! Special guest! <laughs> <laughs> It's it's wild, man. Um, I'm jealous. really uh, I'm happy for you. You're gonna fucking kick ass. You're with great people. Yeah, it, you're just gonna crush it. And uh, but um, I, I don't want to. I I want to say one thing, and we'll let you go back to doing whatever you gotta do. Sure. Wear condoms. <laughs> you have, you have a girlfriend. girlfriend. Still wear condoms. I've wear seen condoms. your I've seen your posters at random uh, oh, venues really? around the country. Drink water. Yeah. This is exciting. You're gonna be on a tour bus. This is gonna be all new. You have yeah. play video games. Oh yeah. What do you what do you play? I mean, I love Nintendo. Fuck yeah. Smash. Oh. Smash is definitely up there. Zelda's like my game. Cool. I got the Triforce tattoo on my back yeah. oh, from when I was a young buck. <laughs> wow. I'll clap to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's our guy. They are masterpieces. Yeah. I, I love the new it. ones are great too. It's, new yeah, fire. Really it's fire, but like I started playing it for a second and then I was like, I can't be doing this shit. Why I gotta, not? I have get to practice. To you have to learn. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to practice. I haven't played uh, video games in a long time now. You'll know he's comfortable. Blink twice if they're making you work too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, let me play a gig before I get fired. Man. <laughs> well, I'm happier in the band. These guys are the best guys on the planet. They're so, very good and guys. And they're genuine dudes. And I'm just, um, take good care of them. Okay? I sure will. If Ricky gets sad, give him a hug. <laughs> I will. If he gets lonely, <laughs> fucking... Give him, a, give him a hug too. Yeah. Don't want his girlfriend to get all pissed off. You know, you don't want that kind of thing. Just worry. give out hugs everywhere you go. Of course, because this life is short, and it's uh, you know, it's it, it, this is a dream, right? Dream come true. Sure. It's fucking Especially nuts. with these fellas. Yeah, and they're, they're good, nice. They're good you guys. Had, it's gonna be fun. You could have been in a band where everyone fucking hated each other. Yeah, that would have sucked. For You're sure, with people who love each other, and this is just gonna be 2.0, and it's gonna be fucking awesome. So yeah. So get out there and go fuck some shit up, baby. Let's go. Woo. Connor. Fuck yeah. Let's, let's go, go, baby. We love it. <laughs> Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. I just think, like, I think of this moment. <laughs> Sorry, was that weird? I just no, brought him in. No. Okay, cool. I think of this moment, like, when you in finally initiate the band, you all just sit in a circle, like the Beatles, and just, like, drop some acid. <laughs> and be like, let's now explore each other. And you guys just run around this chateau, just kind of like the scene in Zoolander. <laughs> scene in Zoolander, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your Hansel, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love it, um, boys. I know you got to get going here. Um, what what's next on the agenda? You're doing the cap. What else can you announce to us? Do you guys putting out a new record? Are you guys working on a new record? Are you always working on new music? Like, how does that process go with you guys? Yeah, we're working on it. I sick. We're working on it. Yeah, we're yeah. working yeah. on it. <laughs> You going metal this time? Like you yeah, it's like a thrash. Gizzard? You're going emo, I guess. I got yeah, it's like it. emo thrash. Like, oh. um, yeah. There, we just found out Goose will be touring with Fallout Boy, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Trevor's <laughs> screaming on the record a lot. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. I got a question. What? What's this? What's the deal with him passing around menthol cigarettes? What? <laughs> DJ more menthol. Yeah. Man. What is this? What? I fucking I love know. this bit. Get with it. Uh, what yeah, happened? It. Like, what, what, how did that first start? What? I didn't even hear about that. He this. would go in the crowd he and start he, chucking menthol he DJ, sticks. He DJs like side trance. That, yeah, yeah. And then like he, he like wears yeah, yeah, he wears okay. like epic shit and then you know, like we'll build up some thing and then when the drop comes, he just like does one of these. He talks oh he's, he's like, packs. Well now I get why he's the hunk. 
Packs of packs yeah. of marbs. He, he doesn't, he doesn't do a set unless he has a couple of cartons. You should you should find a oh, video yeah. of him just like <laughs> like should, late night at Electric Forest. Does oh, he dude. write the cigarettes off? Is what he I was, throws I when he throws <laughs> when he throws those cigarettes. I'm like, God nah. damn, Trev, save some pussy for the rest yeah, of us. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep in the sun. What's the weirdest thing you've seen that dude do? Dude, I can't talk about that. <laughs> 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 you ever see him just like you wake up? Good he's just job. staring at you. <laughs> no, no. His sunglasses from afar. No. You can't see his eyes. No. <laughs> Jeez. Oh no! Where'd you meet him? Um. Well, he's he's from this. Peter, him, and I are all from the same town. Mm -hmm. oh. Trevor's two years older than me. Tr Peter's uh, two years below. And um, I first met this. There's the there's a um, shout out Peter Castaldi. Shout out Peter. Shout out Peter Castaldi. Castaldi. Um, Moran. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, he introduced me to Trevor. Uh, he's he's a good friend of all of ours from from the town here, and he's kind of like a, he's been uh, donned the the Warren Haynes of of Wilton, Connecticut. <laughs> uh, he's he's just like he's played with everyone, and like has there's just, he's kind of like a like a a connective piece between mm. so many it's all of us. There are our whole little like micro cosmic music music community from the area but um yeah so there was uh i was i i was good friends with his younger brother who was in my grade and um my parents friends were having like in when i was in high school he was in college and in, in uh up in uh vermont mm -hmm. and uh they were having like some new year's party and they they wanted a band so they were like all right yeah like all right kid <laughs> like put a you know like come play this party so we put up like this crunchy jam band together to to play my parents friends part like new year's party and that was the first time i met trevor the first time we played together it was sick did he have a mullet what do he look like he did not have a mullet was he, he a pimp always a pimp kind of like <laughs> yeah. in a weird way like, that swag he rolled in with like a like the largest bass cabinet i'd ever <laughs> seen in my life at that point <laughs> You're like, bro, we're in a basement. Yeah, he like brought it down. It was like, it was Coffin. like a, like an eight ten or something. It was just like this huge base cabinet. He had this like hilarious like track suit kind of set up. And I was like, dude, who is this yeah. guy? It's and like Jurassic he, Park he on the bombs. water. When yeah, the water. Yeah. Yeah. Just the Babe, I got a menthol cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> He's a legend. I love it. Did, was there anyone who gave you advice when you were going through this transition into the second phase of your career? For with Cotter and stuff, was there anybody who like um like anyone like mentors like a Trey or anyone? You talk to people about that, or is it just like internally? It was, like, it was pretty under wraps. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, one person that sticks out to me is uh, our good friend Matt Campbell. Yeah. Uh, who we write songs with. He's one of the writers of the band. Um, and he was you know he was present for a lot of the a lot of the auditions and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, his opinion was like, stuck out to me yeah. a lot. And our, especially our, our, our producer, Dan Goodwin, mm -hmm. D James Goodwin. He was, he was a great, great help in, in trying to navigate and figure out what was going on. And our managers are, they were super helpful. I mean, everybody was like, it yeah. was a team effort, you know, to try and like figure out how to do it. You know, yeah. it's not, it wasn't easy to figure out the, the team. Yeah. There was, there was a, like an immense amount of discourse yeah within the team and and yeah. just you know we did everything we can to navigate it the best we can yeah. you know that it was never about screwing anyone over we didn't want to no. cause anyone any harm it, it was it was just you know honestly just trying to make a decision that everyone felt was best for everyone it's great god mature ass fucking bear yeah. look at this <laughs> uh, these guys are just like talking out their feelings I'm out here doing ketamine in Brooklyn, New York. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with us, dude? No, dude, dude you're, doing, you're doing great. Man. You guys are out like, yo, let's just communicate about this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, we're going to go to the bar. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to drink some Jameson. Do you want to come yeah. out? Uh, Why am I sad? <laughs> Why is my dopamine so low? Why do I, I hate my fucking band right now? <laughs> Where's my hormones? Yeah. My libido is shot to hell. I'm coming loogie. <laughs> okay, I gotta get out of here. Okay, we're out of here, guys. Go enjoy yourself. Enjoy uh, practice. Oh my God, there's that hot dude. Get over here too. <laughs> just, we gotta get out of here. All right, just I just just, just show your face, cause God damn it. Just zoom in on it for a this little. This man. Bit. Put the sunglasses on. Put the sun. Do you need? Do you have your menthols? Yeah. Does anybody got a menthol? Got the sunglasses. Anybody have a Newport? 
Everyone got a new port. Hello, got a sir. Mint? The whole band is here. You guys <laughs> are hey, sit real quick for a second. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you again. Likewise. What, what does it feel like, like to be a sex icon? Yeah. You know? Wait, speaking of the microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You just like you just look like a man who has like a Mom fourteen inch up. penis, dude. You yeah. just, I, feel like, I feel like it's just a third leg. It's just like just dangles just gotta, like a you just flag. Just gotta tape it to the you know tape it to the thigh. Oh my god, you excited about? Uh, we got to get to the airport, but I want to have one question. You excited about everything? Is ex is it exciting to have? Fuck yeah! Let's fucking go, right? Yeah, let's fucking go. Because you're the meat and potatoes, <laughs> drums, bass, baby. You guys have to be simpatico. Are you learning to be simpatico? Simpatico. Never, never, will ever say that word correctly. I never say it. Word. <laughs> I didn't go to school. <laughs> How do you say it? What's the word? Simpatico. 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 There's no C in the. There's, only, there's no C. Okay. So the very Thank end. You. Thank you. There you go. Damn. You know, it's you up really for are turning Connecticut on me over here. You come here for 10 minutes. I'm going to Yale. <laughs> go to Yale. <laughs> you excited? Everything good? Yeah. How about you? I'm good. I'm excited. I'm tired. Yeah. You guys you guys all are healthy and drinking water. I mean, Pete's yeah. been drinking water the whole Sardines. time. My body feels like a sponge I'm trying to get all this alcohol out of me. Yeah. But you feeling good? You happy? Yeah, feeling good, rested. Is you it? Know, it's fucking 60 degrees out. Are it's you tight. ever just like not just chilling? Yeah. You're just always just fucking vibing, dude. He chills really hard. I, tr I try to chill. Do you like to nap? <laughs> yeah, I don't rare. I rarely do. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're so, so chill. I wish I could. <laughs> He's too chill to nap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need a nap. He's already chill. He doesn't need He's a just fucking yeah. chill. Well, guys, get out there. Go fuck some shit up. Do everything you can to be happy. That's the most important thing. Fuck the haters. Tell everyone to suck it from the back. I, that's my words, <laughs> not your words. Tell everyone that this is your band. Fuck it. Alive. And whatever you want to do as a band is the right way to do it because you're making music to make yourselves happy too you know it's all about everyone else always thinks it's about them but to write the best music you gotta love it so keep loving music keep Thanks, loving dude. life and have a good day you have a good day likewise goodbye yeah. <laughs> <laughs>